Okay, so again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, De depends on where you are. Uh, this is a section from New York Time developers. Uh, this section is about Volt Fastly Secret Engine. I'm Ling Zeng, the software engineer from New York Times. I'm from the delivery engineering team, and I'll be mostly working on the edge infrastructure, and in this context, it's Fastly. Uh, hi, my name is Sean Bauer. I'm a senior software engineer with The Times. Um, I work on our uh, va uh, vault uh, infrastructure um, and uh, also working with uh, groups around The Times to help um, um, their development go faster. Okay, so firstly, we're going to go through uh, today's agenda. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the Fastly current situation, in including a short description about what Fastly is, just in case you, don't know, you, you guys don't know what Fastly is. And also we're gonna talk about uh, Fastly current situation about secret, secret management. Um, then we're gonna talk about our first try of uh, secret management improvement. And then we're gonna talk about the most important things, which is the uh, Vault Fastly secret engine uh, plugin we created. We're gonna talk about the design of it and the integration of it to our CICD pipeline. And last, uh, we're gonna talk about our future plan for this project. Let's get started. So first, we're going to talk about the Fastly current situation. So what is Fastly? So Fastly is a content delivery network uh, New York Times has been using since election from 2016. Uh, that's a really big change for us, and it's been working really well for us as the major uh, CDN, which is content delivery network. Um, so for those of you guys uh, don't know what content delivery network is, it's a network with between the end user and the, the back end. So improve the user experience by serving the cache content from uh, the network. So in Fastly, it has more than 50 uh, present of point, uh, point of presence globally. Uh, so uh, every time when the end user requests a cache content, a content that can be cached, we cache at the pops as uh, closest to the user. And next time when there's a closer uh, nearby user requests the same content, we can just serve from that pop instead from the backend directly. So that improves the user experience and also it protects the backend from uh, getting overloading um, requests for the same content again and again by serving the cached one. Um, so there's an, also another uh, important thing, uh, functionality we've been using from Fastly is called Instant Purge Service. So for the content that we want to update, uh, we, we can purge the content within milliseconds to actually update the content. So what is the current situation of secret man management for Fastly? There are majorly two types of uh, tokens we've been mostly managing. One is the Fastly global token, and another one is the Fastly purge token. So for the global tokens is um, the one we are using for deploying all the Fastly services. So currently there are 32 apps in New York Times being put in behind Fastly, and their code base are all being put inside of the GitHub right now. And in each repo, we have three environment for the apps, which is known as dev staging and production. Um, and for each environment, we have uh, dedicated uh, tokens for that environment. So when we're deploying the services, we don't mistakenly deploy the wrong one. So there's 36 tokens already because 32 uh, multiplied by three, that's 60, 96. Um, there's also Fastly purge tokens, which has been used for the instant purge uh, service from Fastly that I mentioned before. So there's possible one or more purge tokens per service if the team requires it. For the smaller service that's mostly being maintained by one team, we usually just give them one purge token, but there's also like bigger uh, services that is more collaborative. So we'll give each team their, uh, their own purge tokens. So let's say if there is more than 10 tokens, obviously it's going to be more than 10 tokens. There is already more than 100 tokens. So today we're going to be most talk, mostly talk about the Fastly Global tokens, which is the one we've been using the, in our um, service deployment, Fastly service deployment. So in order to get a clear picture of what the problem is and what the situation is, here is a um, full chart for the Fastly CI CD pipeline, the continued integration and com continued deployment. So as I mentioned before, uh, all the source codes are sitting in the GitHub repository right now, and including all their uh, three environments. And we're using Drone as our CI CD tools. So similar with Travis uh, CI and Jenkins. So Drone is, uh, Drone is actually 
the similar things. The only thing is it's a, uh, it's a container-based thing. So each step has its own uh, Docker container. So it's uh, deployment details is being defined in the drone YAML, just like Travis YAML, uh, the same thing. And we're using Terraform to generate this state file for our configuration. And we're using Amazon S3 to store, as the backend to store the remote state file for the current um, configuration sitting in the Fastly. And we're comparing the difference with the newest uh, changes and the existed uh, remote state file configuration and we deploy the changes to Fastly. And for all the secrets we're using within the CICD pipeline, we put the secrets in the, in the drone secret section for now. And uh, this section is being put into the Amazon RDS it's, and it's being protected by the exit control from the Amazon R RDS. So this is a bigger picture of what the CICD pipeline looks like. So what actually is the problem to solve here? First of all, we're always hitting the limitation of number of tokens in the Fastly account. So um, the account we're using to maintain all the Fastly services has initial 100 number, 100 tokens that can have within that, that account. So as I mentioned before, we have already had um, 100 tokens already. So basically, um, more, like more than 100 tokens already. So every time we want to create a new service, when we want to have more tokens, we have to manually require the tokens from the Fastly side. It's, it's really inconvenient. And also we want to find a better place to store our tokens with easy way of managing it. So um, I believe you guys have been listening to a lot of talks today about Vault. So that's what we're looking for. We want to integrate Vault in our, into our CICD pipeline. Um, we want to use that as a more secure location for the secret storage. And we want to automate the process of retrieving tokens from where it's stored during the deployment to avoid a human operation. So currently we put into the drone secret section, it has no problem with the integration with, with drone. Um, but if we want to put the secrets into Vault, we're going to figure out a way to actually integrate Vault into, into drone. Last, we want to automate a process of rotate, rotating secrets without updating manually everywhere. So that's, that's a problem for us right now because we, we're putting secrets into the drone secret section. So every time when we update the tokens from Fastly side, we have to manually update it in the drone secret section too. So we don't want to manually do anything. We always want to, like more automation um, to avoid any human mistakes. So here comes the first improvement. The first thing we do for our Fastly team, we replace the storage location uh, for the tokens from the drone secret section to Vault, as I mentioned before. So uh, the only thing we did is we migrate all the tokens that have been put into the drone secret section and we put them into the Vault. Into vault. And also we find a way to actually um, integrate the Vault using, by using the Vault image in the drone pipeline. Um, we register the repo using Appro to actually be able to um, get the get the tokens from Vault within the pipeline and export it as an environment bar. We're gonna give more details in um, later. So even though we solved two bullet points, we still have the problem with hitting, always hitting the limitation of number of tokens in the FASA account. And also we have the problem with um, rotation, the, the token rotation. So here comes the current solution, um, which is our Vault FASA secret engine plugin. So continue with the problem we need to solve. Um, besides from using Vault image in the drone pipeline, we designed this Vault secret engine plugin into Vault. So now Vault is going to be um, acting as an agent in, as, on the Fastly side. So it, used, it has its own Fastly account and it only creates a token when we need it using the Fastly API. So in this case, we no longer need to maintain any long-term tokens. We only create it when we need it. And also there's no rotation problem because we always got, get the fresh, fresh new tokens. So that perfectly solve our out of problems. So. All right, so let me, we'll dive in a little bit to um, how we kind of built this plugin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, oh, 
so as Lincoln kind of laid out the, the problems um, or, or the requirements, if you will, I mean, one thing we definitely want to do is to get on that um, sweet dynamic uh, uh, secret bandwagon, right? So um, we don't want to manage tokens. We don't want to rotate them. We just want um, to, to, you know, use them and throw them away. So um, we started looking at those uh, requirements and, and we thought that um, Vault would be a good place to start. So, <clears throat> Um, we looked at how to do um, plugin development, and um, we, we uh, again, thought that would be a good place to start so we could have the dynamic secrets. So then we started looking at what are our design issues. So um, in order to interact with the, the Fastly API and actually create tokens, you have to have an administrator account, and that uh, administrative account is um, protected with multi-factor authentication. Um, so then, you know, we looked at this and again, Vault seems to fit the bill here. There's already um, a TOTB backend available. Um, all the library code is available in open source, so um, we should be able to tick that off. Um, we want to make it easy to use in drones. So we needed to have a way to um, uh, work with our drone uh, uh, setup and Terraform setup that was straightforward and programmatic. Um, again, this was relatively straightforward in vaults um, with app role. Uh, so then finally we wanted to you know, have access control and again, vault excels at this, right? So we have some, <coughs> uh, we can make all the policies we need. We can be really fine grained. We can have a specific scope token, like a global token for a single service or for multiple services or we create a token for um, purging and um, all services. Uh, and this gave us you know, the flexibility to create these um, policies um, within our configuration of Vault um, and they, are, they will grow with us. So if you guys haven't seen it, this is kind of the, you know, how, to, how to do plugin design. So um, first you gotta, you know, write your, your plugin. Um, the way Vault looks at plugins, these HashiCorp guys think security is important apparently. So you can't just like inject code into Vault. You actually run it as a completely separate standalone application. Um, so you gotta write that application. And then when you get the binary for that, um, you, you grab the checksum. You then um, register that with the Vault's plugin catalog, um, providing the checksum. Um, when Vault goes to use it, it's going to look up that plugin in the catalog. Uh, it'll look up <clears throat> the checksum you gave it and compare that with the binary that it has access to. Assuming that um, checks out okay, uh, Vault's going to provide a wrap token to um, your application and then spawn your application. At that point, it's going to set up over RPC using TLS um, a communication pipeline which for the rest of um, the life uh, of the plugin, they'll communicate over uh, uh, via RPC over TLS. So we got our code. And then, like I said, we had to tackle the question of like, how do we um, provide the TOTP tokens? This is just a, a simple snippet showing how easy this was given that we already had the libraries available in vaults. Um, all we're really doing is, um, you know, providing uh, the key um, at the current time and then shipping that off um, too fastly. So fastly you can um, verify that. So step one for, uh, for the plugin is authenticate with this um, administrative account. Uh, so we're gonna have to post uh, to fastly. We're gonna have to provide the uh, uh, TOTP code that we generated. Um, and then we're also gonna apply the username and password for that account. Once we've done that and we've authenticated, we'll crawl the token creation service. Um, to the right, you can see all the different fields you're going to get back um, from that call. Um, what we provide to that um, is a service ID or group of service IDs and then the scope of the token. So again, that we can provide one or many services and get a token back that could manage more than one service um, with you know, one scope. Um, we also optionally can provide a TTL. Uh, in our case, we're um, hard coding, or not hard coding, but we're defaulting our TTL to be five minutes. Um, we really want that to be a dynamic secret that we can use during the run of our pipeline and then just throw away. And our pipelines run in well under five minutes. So that gives us plenty of time uh, to use the token before it expires. 
Uh, all right, we'll do a kind of a demo of um, what the development process looks like. So we're going to um, get into compiling uh, the code. Let me make that bigger. All right. So the first step here again, we're gonna have to build that binary. Once we build that binary, part of our project provides a Docker file that um, we can build um, a container from. You see that we're gonna um, source the canonical vault uh, image. Um, in this case, we're using 10.1. Um, we're going to create a plugin directory, copy in our binary, and then um, using some HCL, um, let vault know where to find those plugins. Uh, after that, we can just run the container. Uh, this is the run command that is listed in the documentation for that canonical container, so we're not doing anything uh, different here. Once we're up and running, we should um, get our vault ladder um, information as well as our tokens. Um, so we can jump over to a different window. So we'll export the vault ladder here. Uh, now we should be able to do a vault login. Once we've done this, we're gonna follow that process that we laid out. So we're going to first um, grab our Shastam. So simply gonna do a little bash magic there to get the Shastam and, and throw that into a, a little bash variable there. Um, then we're going to use the vault CLI tool to write this to the plugin catalog. So um, standard path here. So it goes to the plugins catalog. Um, then we provide the name uh, for the plugin. Uh, we tell it what the shasam is. And then the command here is um, what is the command string you need to actually run the plugin. In this case, we don't have any um, extra parameters. So it's just run the um, catalog. So success, that's good. We now have um, that updated in the plugin catalog. Now we're gonna have to enable that secret backend. And if you've done uh, anything with secret engines and vault, it's all basically the same. The same. It'll be a vault secrets enable. Um, we're gonna pass in the path we want to um, have this um, secret engine, uh, you know, uh, reply, um, <clears throat> the path that we wanna use to interact with it. And then we pass it the plugin name. And it looks like we got that enabled. So um, the next step is custom to our plugin, which is the configuration step. Um, I'll show you on the slide in a minute what that looks like, but I'm going to, for now, run the script that configures it so I don't have to show you all my secret, secret stuff. Um, once we've done that, we should be able to start interacting with, um, with the, the plugin. And so we're simply going to use a vault CLI command to write to the fastly generate path. Um, in this case, I want a global token for this service ID, and we can see that token has been returned to us. Um, and just to show you that it works with fastly, um, here's the token I used earlier. What we should see is that this is, has expired. And if I go and get the new token and re oop, replace that, um, we should see it list the services that are available to this token. And Viola, we see services. Um, also, we can look at the Fastly UI and we can see that this token was just created. Um, and you can see from the previous runs how the tokens automatically are um, revoked after their um, TTL has expired. Okay, so that's the development process. And finally, um, how do we you know, build and deploy this? So again, as Ling mentioned, we use Drone, which is pretty similar to Travis or CircleCI. Um, the first step here is we have a build. It simply goes and grabs the, the Golang uh, canonical image, sets up a couple environment variables to make sure we're using the right uh, architecture and OS, uh, and then a simple cool build. Then we deploy that by uh, just putting this binary into a um, bucket. That bucket is then used in our uh, Terraform config for Vault. Um, we go and grab that plugin and put it into the plugin directory, and uh, we're good to go. Um, 
I'm going to hand it back over to Ling now. She'll talk a little bit more about how we've integrated uh, Vault and Drone together. Great. Thanks, Ron. No problem. Okay. Back to me. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we actually integrate this to our CI/CD tool, which is which is which is tool. So. Here's another snippet of the drone YAML, um, as I talked about before. So each single step in drone is actually an a, a individual uh, Docker container. So in order for all the following steps in, a, in our CI CD pipeline to be able to get access to access to the vault and get the tokens we store in vault out and use it in its container, we have to log into the vault first. So the, the way we're actually um, logging the service into the repo into Vault. We're using the Apro. So we're using the Anchor to actually share all the common secrets in the steps. And also we're using the Vault image here. And in the, in the environment part, we're, we're getting the role ID ahead from, from Vault and we're putting here as an environment var and we're defining the Vault address here. Um, and in the commands, we're, we're Vault write to, um, this pass, which is exactly which this ripple is, and to its APRO login path. And we're putting the row ID here, which is it's getting from the environment var, and the secret ID uh, we put into the, the drone secret section. We're putting the row ID and secret ID into different places so it's more secure. Um, so in that case, that ripple is being registered, registered to Vault. And in the, all the following steps in the drone pipeline, you will be able to access to vote and get the tokens out. So here's an, another snippet from the drone YAML. Um, this is how we actually use um, this plugin in our deploy step to actually get it out from the plugin and use it to export it as an environment bar in this container. Um, so as you can see, we're using the basic uh, both Terraform image we created for this. So it can has access to both. It can it has the functionality in both Vault and Terraform. And in the comment section, we're exporting this out and we're doing the Vault write. So all the Vault write thing is corresponded to a RESTful API. So write is actually a post. Um, so we're, we're writing to this fastly generate path and we're defining the scope and service ID. So it's a global token. We're using it for the deployment and the service ID is whatever this fast service is gonna be. So in that case, we're exporting this for, for this container. We can use it here. So now I'm gonna talk about our future plan for this project. To infinity and beyond. First of all, we want to open source it. So um, at New York Times, we have this open, uh, we have this uh, Maker Week and Maker Day thing. So this project actually um, is born from that thing. So it's a time that our engineer can do our own project. So we were, we were um, thinking about open sourcing for a while and we're going through a process to actually let our infosec uh, guys to letting it pass through to actually open sources. So it's getting there and we want to have more contributor to this project. And also we want more people to benefit from it. Um, and also we want to create a drone plugin for it. So we no longer need to write the comment for it. We can actually wrap it up as the image and we can uh, define the customer customized feed for it. So it will be easier to read and easier to use. And also, we're also thinking we, maybe we can integrate the TOTP functionality in Vault to something other than Fastly. So Fastly is only one use case that we can use it for anything that you don't want to maintain any long-term tokens and um, you don't want to think about the rotation problem for tokens. You can just generate the short-term tokens and use it every time when you generate it only when you need it. So this is our future plan. That's basically it. Thank you, everyone. And I thought there's some question there right yeah so um i answered part of it and then the the second part is um how are we achieving high availability and what's the performance look like um so we actually have a um relatively beefy three node cluster that we run so we have that spread across um multiple regions um so that we have one that's always the active server um, and then that's fronted by a load balancer and that if uh, something happens and a new leader is elected, um, will automatically fail over to whichever standby gets elected to be the active leader. 
um, performance has been fantastic for us. Uh, we're using it in um, nightly scale up, scale down events. We have folks that, that you know rely on Vault being um, available to deploy their applications, and we haven't had um, any major issues so far. So. 